Hi, my name is Robert Lee, and I'm part of the Coherence development team. So I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about some of the, um, some of the features we have in uh, the Coherence 3.6 release, uh, which we, uh, broadly speaking, call uh, Quorum. So the Quorum-related features are really uh, have to do with um, resource planning and how we can control and configure Coherence in terms of how it behaves uh, in the absence of these resources. Uh, so, for example, you know, in any coherence deployment, there's a, a stage in, in deployment planning where we look at, you know, the, um, for example, the amount of data we want to cache, the number of physical servers we have, the amount of physical resources like memory, uh, and so on and so forth. And we look at, you know, we look at how much data we want to store and what physical resources we have, and then we kind of plan around that. Now, historically, you know, we, we kind of deploy with that plan, but we really have no way of controlling, well, what you know, what behaviors does coherence take when the planning doesn't go right? So for example, let's say we, you know, we do our resource planning and we decide we need 10 servers running four JVMs each, uh, you know, each one having a gig of RAM uh, in order to properly, uh, you know, in order to properly store uh, and cache the amount of data that we want. Now, what happens when we lose three or four of these machines at, at a time? Uh, are we, you know, how does, how is coherence going to behave in that scenario? Do we still have um, you know, the proper amount of resources to, to handle the load uh, coming from the application, so on and so forth. So what we, what we really have uh, in Quorum is we have the ability to uh, configure coherence both on a service and on a cluster level basis uh, to, to kind of st start to look at, you know, how, how the services are going to behave when these resources aren't present. Uh, on the configuration side, we have, you know, how, how we go about specifying these policies, we have uh, provided out-of-the-box um, membership-based policies. So, for example, um, let me go to the next slide. For example, um, out-of-the-box, we have the ability to configure on a per-service basis um, membership thresholds that, you know, that we must achieve in order to uh, allow certain kinds of behaviors. So, for example, um, if we take a look at partition cache service, we might say, well, in order to uh, allow the service to perform distribution uh, or backups, you know, we, we require at least three quarters of the, the service members um, be present. Or we might say, well, you know, in order, in order to allow cache writes, um, you know, I, I, want, I want to be fairly certain that I, I'm going to have the, um, the physical resources to, to store. Um, the data that I that I plan for, so I want to make sure that I have at least ninety percent of um, my uh, my anticipated uh, service members present. Um, and you know the <coughs> the quorum policies extend past uh, partition cache service as well. Um, you know this is a concept we've kind of uh, tried to introduce to um, you know the other services like invocation service or proxy as well. So for example, you you would be able to configure uh, your extend proxy service to um, you know only accept uh, proxy connections if you know if, if we have um, the proper number of uh, proxy servers available to handle that that request load um, so you know <clears throat> out of the box we've kind of defined um, uh, you know these policies based on membership thresholds and th and and these are these are things that you can uh, configure in the cache config if you look at um, the quorum policy scheme uh, elements for the various services. Now, the other um, the other way that we can control um, quorum behaviors is we also have a pluggable interface, and what that what that allows is uh, for users to implement custom policies uh, to provide you know more um, complex logic to control the availability of uh, coherence features and behaviors. Uh, you know, as an example, these policies could uh, incorporate, you know, kind of arbitrary uh, external state, you know, external to coherence, um, to provide a more fine-grained kind of resource-driven uh, control of that service. Some examples that you know we kind of envision um, where a custom policy may be useful for uh, controlling a service would be um, suppose you know suppose we have a weekly maintenance window. Um, you know, and, and during that time, we you know we want to disallow certain cache operations, or we know we we know we have this maintenance window where, um, you know, we we don't have all of the physical resources which you know we plan for in production. So during that that window of time, 
um, you know, maybe we don't maybe we don't want to allow all of the cash operations. We don't want, we don't want distribution going on during a maintenance window, for example. Um, we might also have uh, you know we, we might also have dependencies on external systems, right? So, for example, maybe we don't want to allow writes if we know that the database is not available. Um, or you know, another example would be. Uh, suppose you know we have uh, you know we we want you know we want to start up uh, coherence as part of you know a larger um, application and you know we don't want to make coherence available until other parts of the application are available as well so for example so we have we have you know a cluster started and we have some process that uh, we've started to kind of preload data into the cache well, maybe we don't want to make coherence available until that external process is completed. So these are all kinds of examples of, um, you know, kind of more complex uh, quorum-related policies which we could implement with, um, you know, a custom, uh, a custom policy implementation. And lastly, um, so that kind of covers uh, how quorum policies would be applied to uh, the service level. We have also a concept of quorum on the cluster level.